Good morning, everybody. We're live from the birdhouse and we are rolling into September. It is September 6th. I hope everybody had a good Labor Day weekend. Today, we're giving you an update about the different birds people are seeing in their yards, what you can expect to be flowing in to the area. There are some birds migrating through and we'll give you an update on the monarch migration, which we are just about in the peak of. Um, so it's just that, about that time of the year. As always, if you're on, you can say hi in the comments. If you have any questions, you can throw those in there too. If you've got any sightings, those can go in there as well. And uh, we'll get started here. Um, first of all, we've got a couple announcements here at the store. Our photo contest is going on right now, our 11th annual photo contest, and you can submit uh, photos through the 18th of this month. They are eight by 10 photos, so you can get those printed and submitted. We have different categories, those being birds, wildlife, scenery. We have a pet category. We even have a youth category for those 16 and under, and we do give out awards for each category, uh, both first place and second place winner in each category get gift certificates to the store, and then we do have customer's choice voting. Once we've gotten all the photos in, we open up customer's choice voting and the winners of the customer's choice voting get prizes as well. So if you've never entered before, you might want to consider it. It's completely free to enter. Do hand out quite a few prizes. So that is going on right now. You can visit our website for more information on that. That's the birdhouseny.com. Um, also, we have a plant sale coming up on Saturday. We'll have Michael Hainan here with his rare plants. Um, he'll have a whole big uh, selection of some different plants for your yard. And so that's going to be this Saturday, which is September 10th, um, starting at 10 o'clock. And he's usually here till about 4 p.m. or so. So there's that to look forward to as well. And then finally, we're having a big sale. We're thinking ahead here for the holiday season. We are clearing up some space. And so all garden stakes and yard art for limited time are 25% off. So we've got all kinds of things to choose from. Um, so you can take advantage of that sale, which is going on right now, which is pretty exciting. Um, and then as far as things you can see in your backyard, the last time we were live, we talked a little bit about bald birds, and I've seen a little bit of this still going on. Um, I saw a cardinal the other day that was quite um, quite lacking in feathers in its head, so don't be surprised if you're still seeing some birds that look a little bit bald or they're lacking feathers in their head. That's completely normal and they are just molting all their feathers at once. And within a week or so, they will start to have more and more feathers. So um, don't be surprised if you do happen to see some bald birds in your backyard. Completely normal, especially uh, blue jays are known to exhibit this and cardinals as well. So um, you can see the blue jay there and the cardinal both lacking feathers on their heads. So that does happen. Um, not all the time in backyards, but it's not super uncommon either. Some of your sightings and ways to attract some different birds to your yard right now. Uh, woodpeckers, we've been getting lots of reports of different woodpeckers in people's backyards, including the large pileated woodpeckers. This photo was sent in by Erin, who said, just wanted to share. We had our pileated woodpecker in our backyard in Gates this morning. We never, we never see these guys. Didn't have time to grab our camera, so these were taken on my phone. So as far as the woodpeckers go, suet is the best way to attract them. It looks like this feeder here um, that Aaron has is not only a suet feeder, but it looks like there's some peanuts in there as well, which of course the woodpeckers love. Um, you can see with the pileated woodpecker, it's so large. It does need some space in order to support its tail. And um, we always recommend these paddle tail suet feeders here that the birds can cling onto the side here. And then that tail prop here is a good way for them to get some stability uh, when they're feeding. So um, if you've, you're trying to attract large woodpeckers like this pileated woodpecker, or if you have the large red-bellied woodpeckers, um, something with a paddle tail on it is ideal for them. A really, really cool 
sighting that was sent in by Dina was a red-headed woodpecker. We get a lot of people who get red-bellied woodpeckers, which um, are about the same size, but it's rare to get a red-headed woodpecker. And so Dina um, had reported this and ultimately sent in a photo. She says, here's the red-headed woodpecker at our suet feeder. I saw him or her a couple of days ago again. They must have residents around here. So it's kind of rare to see a red-headed woodpecker, especially in your backyard at a feeder. So really, really cool sighting there sent in by Dina, a red-headed woodpecker. Um, some other woodpeckers to be on the lookout for. Of course, we've got the downy woodpecker here all year. We've got the hairy woodpecker here all year. Um, Northern flickers will stick around, but also be on the lookout for this. This is a yellow-bellied sapsucker. These are uh, migratory woodpecker, and they are known for their signature holes in trees, which look like um, straight lines of tiny little holes. And the uh, yellow-bellied sapsucker are migrating through, so you might see more of them now than you would um, normally at other times of the year. So be on the lookout for them. They're uh, almost in between the size of a downy and a hairy woodpecker, and they're kind of a thinner build than, say, your hairy woodpecker would be. So they are definitely around, and people are reporting them. Probably not going to see them at your feeder, um, but look for them crawling up and down your trees in your backyard. Some more sightings you guys have sent in. This, there's some photos of some birds sent in by Bob in his yard. Uh, he reports an eastern wood peewee sitting atop the finch food feeder. So here is your peewee, which is a type of fly catcher. They're definitely still around. I've been hearing some calling here and there as well. And look at this picture about birds with kind of funky feathers or kind of bald in the head. Um, here is a young cardinal after a bit of rain. So it looks like this cardinal is molting some of its juvenile plumage there and molting more into its adult plumage. So really neat photo there sent in by Bob. He also sends in this photo of a brown thrasher uh, in the backyard. This is a kind of a closer up picture of what a brown thrasher looks like. They're in that mockingbird family, so they're closely related to the catbirds, to the mockingbirds, and um, sometimes you can hear them just calling and calling over and over and over again. They don't tend to be as vocal as a mockingbird, but they are still quite vocal and they will mimic the calls of other birds. So they're migratory as well. So they're still around, but they will be on their way out um, shortly. Here's uh, another Eastern, or here's an Eastern Phoebe. This is another type of flycatcher. And the Phoebe is kind of darker in color. It's a little bit more gray than say your uh, Eastern wood peewee there. So a couple different flycatcher species you can still see in the area around here. And then goldfinches, people are reporting lots of goldfinches, including juvenile goldfinches. So you might start to see more activity at your feeders as far as goldfinches go. The thing that the goldfinches really seem to prefer is the finch favorite blend that we have. Of course, they love the Niger seed, but this finch favorite blend is a mix of the Niger as well as ground up sunflower hearts. So um, not only is it good for the finches, people are reporting things like nuthatches and downy woodpeckers and chickadees coming to their finch favorite blend. So you never know what's going to come to it. That that extra little uh, jolt of the ground up sunflower hearts uh, will bring in some extra birds, not just the finches. We do have some different types of finch feeders. We just got this new style in. If you're looking for kind of an upgrade, say you have one of those Niger thistle socks, um, these mesh feeders are really nice. We just got um, another style in here, um, all made in the U.S., and it's got that nice mesh where the finches can just cling on to the side of it. The finches don't need perches necessarily. They'll just cling on to the side of the feeder. So we just got these brand new style of mesh feeders in. Um, so those have just arrived here at the store. We've got um, some new feeders that we have um, that we have just ordered and they have just arrived. Um, let's see a couple other things. The, the Eastern Wood Peewee again. And here's a Northern Flicker. Speaking of different woodpeckers that are being seen in the area, the Northern Flicker can be seen a lot of the times on the ground or here's one on a stump and they'll flick their bill 
around as they uh, look for some different foods in the leaf litter and whatnot. And cedar wax wings. Um, this is a nice photo here of three different cedar wax wings that Bob sent in. He said, young cedar wax wings this morning. Well, maybe not so young. So <laughs> be on the lookout for cedar wax wings, especially if you have any kind of bushes or trees that have berries on them. Um, the cedar wax wings are known to go to those trees or bushes or shrubs uh, in a big, nice, nice big flock eat a bunch of that, the, that food, and then be on their way. But they'll be here all winter long. Um, so these are cedar waxwings, one of the birds you can find around here that has a crest. So if you see something that looks like a cardinal, like a female cardinal, but a little bit off, could very well be a cedar waxwing. Look for that black mask that they have on their face. And warblers. So normally where you're, we're talking about warblers during migration season around May or so, but there are lots of warblers still in the area, still migrating through. Bob has sent in quite a few photos of some different types. And so I'll, I'll share those with you here. First is the black and white warbler, really beautiful striped warbler. He says black and white warbler showed up today. It's a female magnolia warbler. And here's some other species here, a Tennessee warbler and this northern water thrush. So he sent this in curious if uh, we thought that this was a northern water thrush showed up in his backyard. Not the best photo. He says, I think this is a really good photo. And yeah, I would agree. This looks like a northern water thrush to me. And water thrush are in the warbler family. They're um, kind of a larger size warbler. But yeah, I would agree with you that this is a northern water thrush. Really cool sighting there to have in your backyard. Um, this is another neat photo here. And this is a kind of an example of why it can be hard to identify warblers, especially this time of the year in the fall when they don't all have their breeding plumage uh, on. A lot of them are juveniles or in their non-breeding plumage. And Rob says, originally, I thought this was a pine warbler, but after looking at pages 420 and 421 in the Crosley Guide of Eastern Birds, I'm now thinking it is an immature bay-breasted warbler based on the strong two white wing bars. Just not 100% sure. I would agree with you there. Um, I, I put, popped it into the Merlin ID app too, and they um, that also popped up as a bay-breasted warbler. So I would agree with you here that this is a bay-breasted warbler. And just to kind of show you how it can be difficult to identify warblers this time of the year. Um, this is what the male bay-breasted warbler looks like during breeding season here on the right-hand side with that kind of chestnut and dark colored color coloration. Then the females and the and, um, juveniles and their non-breeding plumage will look very, very different. And they'll look like this bird on the left here is also a bay-breasted warbler. So it can be definitely difficult to ID these birds, at least for me, um, this time of the year, but there's some different warblers flowing through. Another bird to look for, not quite a warbler, but they are making their way back down south and they'll flow through the area in some bigger numbers. This month are going to be the blue-headed vireo. Um, look for that uh, very distinctive but broken eye ring here, very, very bright white. They have a bluish grayish head, so another type of bird you might happen to see in your backyard. Um, the Kinglets are also going to be flowing back through. And every once in a while, I happen to see a little ruby crown kinglet in my backyard just very, very randomly, especially if you are letting your yard go a little bit more wild and you've got lots of plants in your yard that you're not chopping down and you're letting them go to seed. Keep an eye out for some of these small birds, not only the the warblers, but you might see little things like these kinglets feeding on the top of those plants. So this is a ruby crown kinglet. Although the ruby on the top of the head isn't always visible, um, they are a little bird that are going to be flowing through in some bigger numbers. So if you're, you see something that's popping around in a bush, hopping around quite a bit, that you think it could be a warbler, could also be a ruby crown kinglet. They do pop around um, quite a bit, move around pretty fast in the trees. And then there's also a golden crown kinglet. Just like the ruby crown kinglet, you might not always see that coloration on the top of their head unless they have it flared out. Um, but these are two species of little birds you might just happen to see 
popping around the bushes and trees in your backyard. Probably not going to come to feeders, um, but I've seen some on the plants in my backyard, like on the Joe Pie weed, once it goes to seed, I've seen them feeding from that. So um, you never know, you might just get some of these little guys in your backyard too, as well as brown creeper. I tend to see this one in my yard pretty frequently, surprisingly. Um, the brown creeper is uh, kind of like the nuthatch. It acts like that way where it will creep along the tree. The nuthatches tend to creep down trees and the brown creeper tends to creep up the tree. It'll creep up and creep up until it reaches uh, a high point of the tree, then it tends to fly down to the base of the tree and just do the same thing over and over again. So they can blend in super, super well. They have really good camouflage. So um, if you see something that looks like some bark on the tree moving, it could very well be a brown creeper. They're going to be flowing in in some bigger numbers as well over the next couple of weeks. Um, White-throated sparrow, same type of thing. If you are uh, feeding your birds black oil sunflower seed or, or anything like the shelled sunflower, anything with the millet in it as well, be on the lookout for white-throated sparrow underneath your feeders especially. They'll sometimes come to hopper feeders or to tray feeders, um, but I know when I see them in my yard, they tend to be underneath my bird feeders. So um, any kind of mix that is feeding your regular, say, house sparrows, should also feed your white-throated sparrows. Our chickadee blend is our best seller. That really has something for any kind of bird that's going to come to a seed feeder in your backyard. Um, but some people also like this deluxe blend. This is also a really good seller for us. They like that the millet is in there. And with the millet, um, you know, it can attract things like the sparrows and the, the morning doves. But You'll also get some other types of sparrows like this white-throated sparrow or the dark-eyed junco. Once they start flowing in in some bigger numbers as well, they'll also eat that millet. But really, you can't go wrong with the chickadee blend, uh, either our chickadee blend, the deluxe, or the cardinal elite. Those are all our top sellers, and they those all attract a really nice diversity of birds. So one of those blends, which is ma mainly a sunflower seed blend, as well as some kind of a finch blend, is always to get the maximum amount of birds coming to your feeders. Um, here's a little song sparrow. So there are song sparrows still around. This was sent in a week or, or more ago from Chris who saw a little baby song sparrow there hopping along her sidewalk. So that was a really cute sighting there and lots of goldfinches around. So uh, Bob sent in a photo of not only the adults but the juveniles are out. The goldfinches nest really late in the season. So. Um, their young are just kind of starting to come out now. So if you see extra goldfinches or what seem like extra goldfinches on your feeders right now, it's probably why. It's probably the juveniles out there soon. Unfortunately, those males will start to molt and their feathers will go from that bright, bright gold. It's more of like an olive color. So um, the finches are here all winter long, but they're just not going to be that bright, bright gold that you're used to seeing right now. And you might see them coming to the heads of your flowers, if you're letting your flowers go to seed, which I highly recommend. Um, not only could things like the kinglets that I was just mentioning come to those, but the goldfinches really, really love the seed heads from different plants like sunflowers, coneflowers, black-eyed Susans. So they eat a variety of different seeds. So keeping those plants in your yard and not chopping them down can really increase the number of goldfinches that you have in your backyard. Um, some people are still seeing Orioles too. Um, they're definitely fizzling. So if you're not seeing them, you're, you're in the majority, but some people are still seeing them. Um, there'll be some spotted kind of reportings over the next few weeks, but really they are on their way out at the moment, but you might still be getting hummingbirds. Hummingbirds will be seen throughout the month. Um, really, they start to flow out of the area around Labor Day, so we're unfortunately at that time of the year where you're going to see less and less hummingbirds, but keep in mind that some of them are migrating from up north, further up north in Canada, and they'll flow through our area here, so you might still see them throughout the month. It's not uncommon to see them through the month of September. So curious if um, if anybody still has Orioles or hummingbirds, if you can put those in the comments. I'm curious who has what coming into the area. So 
Um, and then if you're by the water, be, keep an eye out for some different ducks. So waterfowl migration in the fall can be pretty great. And we'll have some birds flowing through the area that haven't been here over the past couple of months in, in any kind of large numbers. So some birds to be out uh, to be on the lookout for if you are by the water are going to be the redhead here. Um, they've got, like their name suggests, a pretty red head and then a bluish grayish bill. Um, Ringneck duck. So this name's a little deceiving because um, there's not a super visible ring along the neck here of the bird, um, but they do have some a stripe between their bill and their face there. And again, a kind of a bluish grayish bill. So that is a ring neck duck also coming into the area. Greater and lesser scalp, which are two different species. They can be kind of hard to identify to kind of differentiate, I guess I should say, between each other. The greater scalp do, though does have kind of a larger and a more circular head. And then the lesser scalp has a thinner head. So on the left here is the greater scalp. And then on the right, is the lesser. So kind of hard to tell the difference unless they're next to each other, but it isn't uncommon for them to be in a mixed raft of different ducks. So you can easily tell one from the other there. And then the red breasted merganser. I love these guys. They're so funny looking with their crazy feathers on their head, but they'll be flowing into the area also in some larger numbers over this month. So um, then we're in my uh, monarch migration season. This, these these photos here were sent in by Chris, who says, I was so excited to find a monarch caterpillar this morning right by my patio. And then hours later, she sent this photo. She said, I just had to share this new photo from tonight. I found two monarch caterpillars on the same milkweed from this morning. So these guys look pretty big, which doesn't surprise me. We're pretty late in the season here for the monarch butterflies. So this is probably their last instar. So they'll pupate soon. And then they will make their migration down to Mexico. And you might see some more monarch butterflies following through the area because it is monarch migration time. And we're actually in the peak time frame here for the monarch migration. So I've got a little map here um, showing, depending on where you are in the country, the peak dates of monarch migration. And our latitude is right around the 43. Uh, so uh, our peak migration time is around the 3rd to 15th of September, with the midpoint of that migration being around the, uh, the 11th of September. So we are right in the peak monarch migration season. So you might see more and more monarchs flowing through the area. And um, that is why they are making their way down to Mexico where they will spend their winter in those fir forests down there only to make that migration, to begin that migration up north again, starting, uh, starting early spring. So that's everything I have for you guys today. If you have any questions, you can throw those in the comments. Of course, you wanna make sure if you are snapping any photos to submit those to our photo contest. It's always fun to see what kind of things we're getting there. So check out our plant sale on Saturday as well. We've got that going on. And of course, we'll be back on Saturday with another live broadcast. And if you've got any kind of questions, you can throw those in there. Um, Bob says they certainly do like that mix. And I believe he was talking about the finch favorite mix. Um, if you're feeding the birds just Niger seed, that's always good. Uh, but the Finch favorite blend just gives them a little something extra. And boy, do they really, really like it. I switched to that a few years ago and the difference has just been very, very um, amazing, actually. Anne is on. She says, do the Niger mesh feeders tend to get the food uh, bad quicker because of water exposure? That's a really good question. Um, they can. Yes, they, they can. A lot of them will have some kind of a weather guard, which helps. This one has a very, very slight weather guard where the, the top goes over the feeder, um, hangs over the feeder a little bit. So that can help. But um, if you do put out a mesh feeder, it really can help to put a some kind of a dome over it in order to keep the seed dry. If it does get wet and sits there for too long without drying out quickly, it can get moldy pretty fast. So that is something to consider. That's a really good question. Um, Bob says, 
Uh, Chris M. And I think those warblers need to wear name tags. Yeah, seriously, I agree with you there. That would make it uh, that would make it a lot easier if they did. But I guess that takes the fun out of it, though, doesn't it? Um, let's see. Lynn is on, and she says, "Good morning. We are still having a few hummingbirds. Four or five last seen. No Orioles for a while. Tons of finches. They are loving the sunflower hearts. Okay, yeah. So the finches absolutely love the sunflower hearts. Um, there's sunflower hearts in that finch blend, um, but then you can also feed them just straight up sunflower hearts." as well. Um, Ellen is on and she says, thanks always Liz for your updates and great information. Of course, you're very welcome. Thank you guys for tuning in. It looks like that's everybody's comments and questions for the day. Uh, we will be back on Saturday with another broadcast and until then enjoy your week and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.